He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to all of you this morning. Thank you for joining us for our Easter greeting. We're going to uh, listen to Pastor Palmer. He's going to read to us from Scripture this morning from 1 Corinthians 15. He's going to have a, a brief word about that for us. And then I'm going to uh, tell you just a little bit about what we're going to do at the 9 o'clock worship service. After that, Pastor Palmer and I will um, recess, we'll walk out, and we'll let you enjoy listening to Mrs. Dell play a little bit more Easter music as you enjoy looking at the altar area and the lilies. Pastor Palmer? Well, we have a reading from 1 Corinthians 15. And as Pastor Shoup knows, and most uh, folks know, that even though this isn't from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this is one of the most marvelous places to uh, hear about the resurrection, this chapter. And it might be something you want to read the full chapter between now and our 9 o'clock worship service. So from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, we hear the Apostle Paul write these words. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. And so we have a listing of the multiple individuals that were eyewitnesses to the resurrection of our Lord. A reason for great rejoicing, right, Pastor Shoup? Indeed. And this one uh, who rose for us is alive evermore. And in the midst of our uh, time, odd time for sure, uh, my 90-plus-year-old father-in-law, Reverend Fred Betcher, wrote this little poem about our present time with the coronavirus and things being closed, the way it is, and the resurrection. Simple words that I share with you this morning. He wrote, There's one thing open amid all that's closed, Jesus' tomb, emptiness, Contrary to what they supposed, sin, Satan, gloom, death, and hell, over each Christ is victor, all is well. With eggs and bunnies, let kids have their fun, above all cherish the living one. Because I live, you also shall live. That's Christ's sure promise for us to believe. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I went outside just a few moments ago and uh, told Pastor Palmer I needed to find a rock. He said, well, there's plenty out back by the brick. I picked this one up and uh, I don't want to hold it for a half hour or so. It's maybe, I think it's actually a little heavier than a bowling ball, even though it's not as big as one. And uh, maybe when you turned on your uh, device this morning, I'm going to set, you want to hold this? Maybe when you turned on your device this morning, you saw that the lights were down. We hope that didn't cause you to think, okay, things aren't working. We wanted to create a little bit of a sense of what's happening when we start the second service or where we start the readings for the second service. Mary and the other Mary went to the tomb at dawn, and they went there to see the tomb. And they knew what was real, and one of the things that was real was a large stone, a great stone or rock that was rolled in front of the tomb, and they knew that their Savior was in it. That's what was real for them, as real as a rock. But who determines what is truly real? 
is the Lord God himself. And this is Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We look forward to seeing you at 9 a.m. for worship.